Bloomberg, I love their warmongering headline. U.S. and Israel weigh peacekeepers for the Gaza Strip. What does that mean? Let's just say it like it is, Bloomberg. The U.S. wants U.S. soldiers in Gaza. Now, here's what's important to understand. The way they're framing it is after Hamas. After? Well, Times of Israel, citing the New York Times, says that U.S. special forces are already deployed into Israel on the ground to assist with recovering hostages. But come on, what does that mean? This means special forces are going to be working on, I mean, I, I don't see any other argument that can be made. You, or I, I suppose you could argue that U.S. special forces are just in a, in a room somewhere in Tel Aviv, you know, giving intel and giving advice. I don't think we use special forces for that, but maybe the most likely thing is they are engaged in recovery, which we on this show warned about several uh, or, or, or a month ago that or not, not even a month, ago, a few weeks ago, that if U.S. Uh, if citizens are taken uh, captive, are, are kidnapped, then the U.S. typically sends boots on the ground to bring them back. And so now that we're seeing this, let me put it all together for you. What seems more likely? U.S. special forces are already in Gaza engaged in operations, which will result in the removal of Hamas, by which then the U.S. wants to send more U.S. troops into Gaza. Well, how, how, how are you guys doing? I'm thinking about Vietnam because I saw that word peacekeeper. And I remember they started off the Vietnam uh, surge of troops by calling them advisors. Yeah. So there was, wasn't really a war, wasn't even really considered a military uh, expedition in the 50s. I think it was the late 50s when they started sending their advisors over there. And, uh, you know, it just scaled from there. So it kind of tastes like that. What do you think? I don't like it. Oh, and I also think that if there's one, if they get all the hostages out, but then there's one left, yeah. they'll use that as a reason to send 10,000 guys in. They'll just they just want to conquer the place. Left. They'll just say, oh, there's still 10 Americans whose identities are being remained secret, uh, private because of the you know, risk of their family and uh, got to send in the troops. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, that's it. I mean, the U.S. is is here. Here's my fear. I hope none of this happens, but it seems like they're doing these things so that they slowly introduce you into the idea that there will be troops in Gaza. Because uh, does anybody remember the exact date when the U.S. announced that they were declaring war on Syria and sending troops into Syria? Yeah, most people don't. And I was surprised at one point. I remember hearing about U.S. troops in Syria. And I was like, wait, what? When did we go into Syria? Like, we're in, we're in Syria at first. It was like, there are no troops in Syria. And then like, oh, we actually have bases there now. Yeah. yeah, they started as we're just sending them to help with something. It's sort of almost a humanitarian effort that we sent our military to take care of. And then it just escalates to being like, well, we need to always have a presence there because without, without us, what would they do? I mean, this is the thing that bothers me the most about uh, the way the American government leans on its military, which is to say we can send troops to all kinds of places across the world, but we do not send them to the border, which protects our own citizens. Right. We got to stop being everything to everybody or stop trying to be everything to everybody. We can be everything to everybody here in the u.s exactly mm -hmm. that's right that's let's let's do that yeah. and you know that's why i'm saying i see all these like uh there's like gen z videos on tiktok where they're like we should have free education and free health care and we're spending money or so the funny thing is you get this young woman and she's a communist and she's like society like the, the the current generation is suffering the economy is terrible we're living paycheck to paycheck when we could be having free health care and free college and i'm like here we go and then she goes but instead we're spending it all in the military industrial complex and i'm like deal all right, I'll take it. If we stop funding blowing up kids in foreign countries and then we apply whatever money is, is left from that into like giving medical care to people like deal left. You can have that if we if we all agree to stop doing this. Maybe that's their game, though. Mm. The establishment is like, let's 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 stress the American people by blowing up kids as many kids as possible around the world mm. till they beg us. We will give you authoritarian control if you stop blowing that up. That is actually countries. a technocratic tactic. They want to give us war weariness until we'll say, please give us anything but war, including putting people into pods and medicating them. Making like, them eat the bugs. Yeah. Well, I think they'll just have a taste for it at that point. They'll be like, mm, but war is so fun and we make so much money off of it. We'll continue on. Yeah, it's back to the FDR, right? The FDR theory, right? Where he goaded us into World War II by um, meddling with Japan because he needed it to satisfy his promises of the of the new deal. 